I forgot. To, I am not meaning to disparage Drew Holiday. I'm really not. I'm saying that you have gone from, again, in a few months, Pat Riley's a genius. Look at culture, what it, and now you're telling me, man, Drew Holiday is the difference between them knocking out a historically great regular season team <laughs> easily, easily, and them getting swept more easily because Bryn Forbes and Drew Holiday. Like, come on, Stugatz. If I tell you any other team in the league has added Drew Holiday, that's not the disparity you're making. It can be all of those things, right? It can be everything that we're talking about. Every last thing, COVID and Jimmy Butler not physically right and long season last year and bubble frauds. Because I do think, Stugatz, one of the things that you concern yourself with when Jake Crowder goes from, do you remember last year we were talking and I'm saying, I don't remember Jake Crowder shooting like this ever. I've always thought of him as an erratic shooter. And then you go to now, and he's 5% from three the first three games. I'm legitimately confused by what I just saw, and I wonder, and I ask the audience and you guys this question, because I do wonder about this, having seen it happen so fast, squeezed and fast-forwarded from Riley's a genius to Riley's an idiot, seven months. <laughs> and I want to ask you this, because is it fair to wonder if when they signed Dion Waiters and Hassan Whiteside because they got a 31 and 11 fluke and a second half in a season and said, let's try again, if they got another bubble fluke that would understandably explain why it is that Pat Riley suddenly became an idiot while the Bucks looked like they did exactly what they needed to do to keep Giannis, which is go and mortgage yourself for a second best player like Drew Holiday, even though it's too expensive in the effort to, to win this year because you think you can beat the Nets? Well, I think if the Miami Heat from the bubble play the Miami Heat of this year, the Miami Heat of this year would get their ass dragged. Why is that? Well, last year's team actually had better players too. Remember, Pat Riley did try to improve this scene with Victor Oladipo. Everybody was singing their praises. The Miami Heat were playing good basketball. It didn't work out. Oladipo got hurt. That kind of shoots your plans because now you don't have Kelly Olynyk or Jay Crowder headed into this postseason. We're all struggling. And it's unfortunate, not that a, an Eastern Conference champion has much of a legacy, but a lot of it is tarnished because this bubble thing only gets amplified because the Miami Heat dropped completely off this season. It's not just that the Milwaukee Bucks are better. The Miami Heat are a lot worse than they were last year, and we're all struggling to find out exactly why. I, I think the autopsy of the Heat failure uh, in being swept has to start with their big three in scoring. Butler, Adebayo, and Hero during the regular season combined for a 56-point average per game. They were a sad fraction of that in these four games, and, and I think that's where it has to start. Your big three scorers didn't show Pat Riley decided after a 30-11 and 11 second half or whatever it was, I'm going to do the absurd thing of giving money to Dion Waiters. I'm going to give money to Hassan Whiteside. Felt right at the time. I, mean. I understand. And this is what I want to talk about, though. So it's a 40 game sample, and we all celebrated when they won like that and talked about culture. When they signed those guys, then we celebrated again when they traded those guys riley's a genius he's special it's quite the roller coaster then man. we go to eastern conference finals and the question i'm asking you guys is is it a mistake that everyone makes not the first one but the second one to think that your bubble team is real to think that your mid-seeded bubble team who went through the playoffs last year as a five seed correct they swept the pace and the pacers were the four seed they made it look easy. Four, five, six. They knock off Tatum and Jalen Brown. Not this version of the Celtics, also in disrepair. Also some of the things that can be explained about the Heat. What happened to Boston this year? Played deep into the season, and the teams that played deep into last season, just their bodies aren't right. All of them. Anthony Davis just fell apart again. Like, none of these. <laughs> one of the things that's been fascinating about the sports greed of the pandemic is to see the bodies physically falling apart. But Anthony Davis has been falling apart for a decade. Bubble or no bubble. Well, he wasn't yeah. last year. Last year, he was fine. Last okay. year, bubble or no bubble, he won the championship. He did. Bubble or no bubble, he beat the Heat. He was the difference <laughs> in winning the championship and not winning the championship last year. 
And so you could say he's always injured, but now he's injured again. And I just simply wonder, is it an understandable mistake? Would you have stood pat? Because I remember the arguments around here. James Harden was not somebody that everyone around here wanted a few months ago. It would have been very difficult on the heels of that run for me if I'm running the organization, but I'm not Pat Riley. Like Pat Riley, this is what he's supposed to do. This is what he's supposed to be great at. This is why he's beloved down here in South Florida. I'm not certain I could have traded Tyler Hero or Bam, but when you consider what you could have gotten back, which was James Harden, it seems pretty ridiculous yeah, now. How dare you, Dan <laughs> Lebatard? I want James Harden now. Uh, yeah. We, we should have oh, you shut up. Wow. <laughs> I mean, what are you doing, Pat Riley? He did try to help the team, though. He did try to improve when he realized, okay, we maybe missed the bus in not being super aggressive for James Harden, even though I don't think you top the Nets offer for James Harden. And that's oh. also hanging over this, too. He did try to help the team. He went for it. And Oladipo fit really well. And Old Oladipo, the Miami Heat, framed his decision as Victor Oladipo decides to have surgery after we played this vague game of is he available or is he not for damn near two months, ends up not being available. And right there, your championship hopes are dashed. Now, that doesn't mean you can't still be competitive. They got swept out and embarrassed. They kicked the tires on Harden. I mean, it's not as if they didn't go after him. It's not as if they weren't interested. And correct me if I'm wrong. They would have included Tyler Hero in a heartbeat. They they didn't they couldn't compete with Brooklyn because they don't have first round picks to give. I'm not even talking about whether they could have. I'm talking about the general atmosphere here and in Miami when this was being talked about, and people did not want him. Did not want him around strip clubs, did not want his pot belly self wandering around. Like that was a thing. That and well, they it, fell in love with Tyler Hero and Bam, too. I mean, it's I, a combination. I understood, but I I am floored again. I will say again, I'm floored by how much things can change in a quick period of time because I, again, not to disparage Drew Holiday, but I believe everyone is forgetting how good that Bucks team was last year. The Bucks team that headed into the playoffs and got dismantled by the Miami Heat had a historic regular season. They were like as good for much of the season as Golden State was the year that they went 72 and 10. So the part that I'm confused by is the Heat dismantled that team. I saw and so I'm wondering and I know playoffs are about matchups and so the matchups changed because Drew Holiday was out there. But it doesn't explain. Drew Holiday is not the reason that Bryn Forbes outscored Jimmy Butler. Dr Drew Holiday is not the reason Brooke Lopez was better than Bam Adebayo. <laughs> we didn't want to give up Tyler Hero for the likes of Drew Holiday, let alone James Harden. Now you see that, man, we should have we should have traded Hero for Drew Holiday because we would have been so much better. <laughs> and he wouldn't have been with the Bucks. He would have been with us. Sometimes when you hold your cards, and, and you play certain ones, it just doesn't work out. And it didn't work out for this year's Miami Heat. The Oladipo thing, I think, was pretty big, ultimately. I think you're kind of underestimated the impact of Drew Holiday, though, in terms of, so the biggest difference between last year and this year was an 18-point drop-off in the Heat's offensive rating. Drew Holiday is one of the best defenders in the NBA, period. But the other thing that it does, too, is it kind of takes Giannis off the ball. One of the things that we've seen with Giannis is that he does have a little bit of an off a limited offensive game in bigger moments. And Giannis was actually allowed to be a screener in this series. And Drew Holiday kind of opened up the entire floor. So in, in a weird way, like he is kind of a, a massive part of the impact. Like I think you're kind of underselling what he kind of changes in that Milwaukee team. It's a great point where Giannis doesn't have to be relied on to do every single little thing. He had a game where they, he had 17 points. They won that game easily. He averaged 23 and a half points per game. We all know he can average 35 if he wanted to. He doesn't have to anymore. I mean, it seems like you don't like Drew Holiday. I mean, those, uh, those are all good points on Drew Holiday. I'm still saying to you, as I see the Bucks be a lot different as a team, I feel like everyone's forgetting how good that team was in the regular season last year. I, that Their point differential, I think there's been only one other team that had that point differential during a regular season because of how they crushed everybody. And they are a different team. And they made all of those moves. They spent a lot of money on Drew Holiday for that reason. The Heat made them do that. The Heat in every way made them do that because of the fear that Giannis was going to end up here. They were 56 and 17. They were plus 10. The eventual champion Lakers were plus five. So they were a really good team. You're right. They were a good team. They're better this year.
better for the specific reasons you're talking about for playoff basketball. Yes. Better for playoff <laughs> basketball. And they know it because Giannis, after I, I had not heard this quote, had, had you guys heard this quote? Because this kind of stuff can become a cliche, but this is not a quote that I had heard. I remember the first time that I ever heard that uh, I think it was Kobe Bryant was playing with Andrew Bynum and Kobe Bryant says, everyone knows I eat first in terms of dog analogies. I had never heard anyone in sports say what Giannis did, which is don't play with your food. We didn't want to play with our food that the Miami heat were their food, that they didn't want to go up three Oh and play <laughs> with their food. I have you guys heard someone say that that way about sports, because I imagine it can and will become a cliche, but it's the first time I heard it. When the food is on the plate, Dan, you eat it. You don't play around with it. You don't move it around. You don't change side. You eat the food that's on the plate. Otherwise the food might get, you know, uh, food might eat you. You never know. <laughs> I understand the quotes to God. You explained it and elaborated it. I in just want to make sure that, that you, made, you, you made it worse. No, right. I'm not. I seem confused. The food could get cold. I mean, I, you never know. I, I, mean, I know what it means to not play with your food. So guys, I don't know why you felt like you very cockily got in there, waving your sausage yeah. fingers around very confidently explaining to me what Giannis meant with, as if I didn't understand it. He seemed confused, Greg. Did he not? I mean, I, to, to Giannis's <laughs> point in game four, it looked like they were teasing and toying with the Miami Heat. Yeah. The Heat had a six-point halftime lead, and the Bucks laughed at it and, and dominated in the second half. Mm -hmm. I feel like you lost the plot a little bit because then you combine, like, traditional plated food with yeah. Animal Kingdom because yeah. I don't think my chicken cordon bleu is going to no. eat me. You're right. You're re point. You read that correctly. You did. Yeah. I feel like you tried to explain and elaborate my point, and you muddled it and uh, made it appreciably worse by instead of making it about hunting, making it about a chicken parm attacking you. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, I do what I can around you. Thank you, Stugatz. How'd you feel about the Bucks? Stu Holiday. How did you feel about the Bucks? I, 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 when I get too ball dominant, I do need a Stu Holiday. Unfortunately, my Stu is always on holiday. Hey -oh. I mean, you just weren't. You just didn't understand the analogy at all. Like yeah, you, I got caught up in the middle of but it, you just, But you did it with your fingers, and you were well, like, I felt so good. You yeah. were so, sometimes your food gets, you don't want it to get cold. Yeah, because, yeah, you yeah. Know, nobody Then I realized wanted, food can't eat you. you yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you didn't even, you, you say I was confused. You project that on me. You didn't understand the quote. Uh, freedom Week, Dana.